Daniel here for Tabletop for One and my first impressions after four plays of Raising Robots. And I thank you for joining me tonight. Now, Raising Robots is designed by Brett Sobel and Seth Van Orden and published by Nauvoo Games. And I backed this game on Kickstarter. It looked like a game that I would enjoy and it has tablet building and that sort of thing. It's all about raising these robots and then activating them, helping them produce, you know, resources, points, and other things. And so the first thing I want to talk about is the production quality. Now I have the deluxe version and the deluxe version comes with these nice wooden discs and they have screen printing on them as well as some wooden resources and all sorts of things like that. So it's very nicely well produced. It's even got foil embossing on the cover. Yeah, there's not uh, anything I would complain about the production quality, except maybe the tokens are a little on the small side, but that's m a me problem because I have very large hands. And so it's, you know, it's kind of hard for me to pick up smaller tokens. They just kind of slip through the fingers. But <laughs> um, anyways, that's just a me problem. Really, the production quality here is fantastic. I, I absolutely love it. But now let's talk about the gameplay. So in the gameplay of Raising Robots, you have what is called a phase selection or an action selection where you're going to choose two actions and you're gonna see if anybody else chooses those actions or different actions and you'll be able to uh, use the actions that everyone chooses as well as the ones you do. Now in the solo mode, that means that you're gonna be drawing uh, action cards randomly for the uh, the AI. The AI might choose the same ones you do or it might choose different ones giving you access to more actions in that round. And so the actions of the game are upgrade, assemble, design, fabricate, and recycle. And so the upgrade is where you spend resources and then you're going to upgrade actions. So you'll take this little upgrade token off one of the actions which reveals an additional bonus that you get if you use that action. And so it's very useful to getting your engine going and being able to do more stuff. Assemble lets you build robot cards into your tableau. And then design, fabricate, and recycle are all the different ways that you activate the robots because there's three different rows of robots. And so design activates one row, fabricate the other, and recycle the third one. And so if you choose one of those actions, you'll gain resources or you spend resources to do things and, and that sort of thing. So you, you activate everything for that action top to bottom and then all those robots in that row from left to right. Now the interesting thing about choosing actions is you have what is called power. And so depending on the action you choose and the way you choose it, you'll gain a certain amount of power to use that action. And the more power you use in that action is the, the more beneficial that action will be or the more options you will get to use. And so for instance, with the upgrade action, if you only have a power of one, it takes four resources to upgrade an action. Whereas if you have a power of seven, it only takes one. You could always split that power too. So if you have seven power, you could instead do like the five power version of it where it only costs two resources for an upgrade and then a one power version where it costs four. So you get two upgrades out of that one action. It just depends on how you wanna split up that power if you wanna do that. With assembling robots, the higher power you have, the less the robot costs to make. And so that's kind of nice when it comes to how tight the resources can be at times. And then you have the design, fabricate, and recycle. And so depending on how much power you use for those actions, it'll give you more bonuses for that action specifically. And then some of your robots require certain power requirements for those actions to be activated. And so managing that power is a very important thing to do. And it provides a nice little puzzle as you're trying to make sure that you activate everything into the power that you want it to. Now, why are you doing all these actions? Well, you're doing all these actions to gain points. Now, each of the robots that you build will give you points. Some of the robots themselves will give you points by converting resources or just giving you, giving you straight up points. You also get points by doing these class cards. These class cards are kind of like goal cards where you're trying to get a certain amount of robots in your playing field or you're trying to get certain color upgrades out. You can also upgrade your class cards so that there are, uh, you meet a higher level Level requirement than maybe you actually did during the playthrough so you'll earn more points for that and so yeah there's different ways to earn points and that leads us right into the ease of solo play now as far as learning this game goes I'm not sure on the rule book whether I, I like that or not I have mixed feelings about the rule book some things just weren't laid out in a way that I understood them 
as, as quickly as I should have because there's not a lot to this game as far as rules, but I think there was just so many words written in the rule book that made it seem like it was uh, more complicated than it actually was. And now the AI, which is simulate that there's another player, so they might choose actions you use, giving you a little bit of extra power for those actions, or they might choose other actions, allowing you to use other actions that you didn't get to choose that turn. The AI is really easy to run. It all comes down to the fact that this is a beat your own score solo game. And so you're trying to get the high score you can and compare it to the scoring ranks. And with that, it works well. It does fine. The game actually encourages you to do a three game streak where you're playing three games in a row without shuffling the robot cards. And so you, I actually did that. And uh, it turns out that you don't go through the entire robot deck. There's that many cards. And so, yeah, yeah, you get to see a lot of different robots and a lot of different setups. So it's a good way to do it. Now, as for replayability, I would imagine that there's a good amount of replayability just based off of the scientist card. So you choose one scientist card every time you play. So it's kind of an asymmetric power where you can upgrade it actually. And so you can upgrade it with one of the upgrade tokens, making it more powerful. So it gives you a different way to approach the game, you know, maybe discounts for certain things or you draw extra cards or draw extra resources, that sort of thing. And so there is a good amount of replayability between those, but not enough for me personally, which I'll talk about in my recommendation shortly. Other than that, when it comes to the cards themselves, the, the class cards aren't varied enough to really matter. Uh, I didn't really find the class cards very unique or very challenging to try and accomplish. As for the robot cards, there's a lot of different robot cards. They do a lot of different things, but a lot of it comes down to do they generate points? Because a lot of the times you're gonna want those for generating points when you activate those actions. And if they fit in a particular row, because usually you're gonna max out one row over the others and constantly use that action to produce resources or points or that sort of thing. And so when it comes to the cards, you're really just gonna be looking, does it match the row that I'm working on? Then does it give me points? And so the, the cards themselves, their, their art, which is fun, you're not really you know, focused on that much at all. You're just focused on the stats. And I never really saw that any of the robots were super powerful. It's like, oh, I can't wait to get that card because you know, it, they just all seem to work very similarly. And so let's go on to my recommendation. Do I recommend this game? Yes and no. <laughs> well, here's the thing. If you like Earth, and from what I hear, if you like Wingspan, I haven't played Wingspan, but if you like those games, you'll like this game. From what I hear, this game does those games, but a little bit better. And I do say that what this game does, it does it well. The problem for me personally, and why I don't recommend it, is if you don't like the face selection, this is the same kind of face selection you see in Race for the Galaxy or Terraforming Mars Ares Expedition. If you don't like that kind of face selection where you're kind of counting on the AI to draw phases that you can use, and if it doesn't happen, it's very detrimental to your engine. I don't like that. I really don't like that. I feel like it's out of my hands on, you know, whether I'm doing well and a little too on the random side. And so, yeah, if you don't like that, you're not gonna like this game. On top of that, I wanna talk about those uh, scientist cards. See, there was something that I felt was missing from this game. And I thought about it early on, I was thinking, all right, you know what I don't like about this game? I don't like the fact that when you build a robot, you don't activate it right away and gain a bonus from it. I was like, that would make the game so much more fun. And then as I was playing and I drew a scientist card that had that, literally had that ability. It had the ability that when you play a robot card, you activate it. And I thought, why doesn't this game just have that as a regular thing? And so for me, if I replay this game, and I'm not sure that I'm gonna do it, but if I do, I'm only gonna use that scientist card because he made the game that much more fun. And it added a good layer to the puzzle, and it didn't make me feel like the, the phase selection worked against me because I could activate those robots when I built them. On top of that, it activated robots that I built late in the game that likely wouldn't get activated due to the fact that it's near the end of the game. And so when you're able to activate those robots, it adds a little bit of an extra puzzle. You're like, all right, if I play this card now, I'll get those resources and then I can use those resources to do an upgrade action. And so maybe I should plan around getting those resources and playing those cards. And yeah, it was so much better. And so I will never ever play this game solo without using that scientist, which means I won't ever use the other scientists. 
And so that's kind of a me thing, but I just found the, the gameplay to be stale and punishing when the phase cards weren't drawn the right way. And so when I got that scientist, it was so much more fun. Now, is it enough to save it to keep it in my collection? Only time will tell. I'm, I'm not sure about that, but we'll see. And like I said, if you like Earth, you'll like this game because it has a lot of similarities to it, but there's some good differences from it. I do think this is a better game than Earth. Uh, you know, I sold Earth and I'm not sure I'm gonna sell this, so that should say something. So I do think this is a better game, but like I said, we'll see. And so there you have it. That was my first impressions after four plays of Raising Robots. You'll have to let me know in the comments below what you think of this game. Tell me how wrong I am about this game. Trust me, I know I'm a minority in my opinion on these kinds of games, but I guess I just don't like that phase selection. It's just not a mechanic that works for me and I gotta stop buying games that have it. But definitely let me know your thoughts. I'd love to hear you in the comments. Please also like and subscribe to this channel if you like the content you see here. And I thank you very much for joining me on Tabletop for One. Have a great night.